All right, we're live. What's up, my brothers? This is the follow-up to the uh, Tommy, Tommy. You know who we're talking about, Laren Hissy Fit. And I've had this in my inbox for a few days now. I know a few other people have probably covered this, but I have some interesting information you probably haven't heard from the guy that uh, feels like he's 100% sure he was the catalyst for her initial hissy fit and her follow-up. So before I... Let me just chuck this in the stream here to queue it up. Uh, there it is. Okay. So before I play that a little bit, let me just open up my messages here. So this is the interesting thing about YouTube because anybody can reach out to you. They can email you, they can DM you. I've had some interesting uh, conversations with people that have sent me things that most people wouldn't be pervy to. So it's so it's kind of cool that, that that showed up. But uh, anyway, long story short, I'll just read this to you. I'm gonna leave out some specific details to keep this guy as anonymous as possible, but um, it's relevant because when I play back her little bit, um, you're gonna see why in a minute and some of the truths that are not being disclosed and the story behind the hissy fit and why she keeps throwing them sort of thing. Anyway, he goes on to say, uh, I caused this uh, public service announcement. I'm 100% serious. She's mad at me after I wouldn't date one of her friends. I was clearly, sorry, I was sleeping with after I set some clear boundaries around that and that we would not be dating. He says uh, he just got out of a long-term relationship and he told her friend. Now, if you remember from the original video, the original Hissy Fit, which I do have on my channel as well, it's from like a week ago. You can just go back, you'll see it. Uh, after this video renders, I'll grab a card and I'll put it up on the top right. For those of you that are watching the replay, you can pop it out in the banner. Um, she went on to, to include the rant uh, to cover her and her friends. I'm of high value, so are all of my friends. You guys don't value us and me and all of my friends sort of thing. So if you do recall the language, it's not specific to her ex-fiance, as a lot of you guys uh, have, have pointed out um, in the comments prior. Anyway, so he got out of a long-term relationship with this chick, told Tommy's friend that he did not want to settle down, did not want to date. So they were basically FWBs, right? Uh, now, her friend had been complaining to Tommy nonstop, and she went on this rant as a result, he claims. It's hilarious because most of the comments are also very, very negative on her. Um, apparently, so we'll we'll deal with the fiance part as well. Um, but this dude here claims from inside knowledge that she cheated on her fiance with a country music star. So he finds it ironic that she's lecturing men now. Uh, she used to live in Dallas when she worked for Blaze, an online network run by conservative. Glenn Beck, headquartered in Dallas. She moved to LA after she got fired for saying that she was pro-life anyway. Um, so this dude says he was quarantined with the best friends there in Texas. Uh, during the three months, the entire city was shut down. There was nothing to do. And he had just gotten out of the long-term relationship when he started the FWB uh, sequence of events with her best friends. Do, do, do. He, said, he said specifically to her, I am not looking for a relationship. It may be up to a year before I even consider getting into dating again. So this was just, again, FWB. He made it clear, set that boundary. And he wasn't ready for anything or in the coming months. They started hanging out, blah, blah, blah. Of course, one thing leads to another. Fast forward to May. Okay. And then he had to get rid of her because she started going crazy, it looks like. Um, doo, doo, doo. And then he started going on dates with other girls. Mutual friends saw him with a younger girl with um, a well-endowed top, let's say. Uh, and that got back to Tommy, which then triggered this entire hissy fit. By the way, her friend that she's mentioning in the video is 35, and she's older than this guy. Uh, I don't know how old this gentleman is, but he looks like a handsome young man. Definitely close to Giga Chad status, I'd say, as a lot of you guys like to measure these guys on a scale. Um, so anyway, she's been heartbroken. They went back and forth, drunk texts back and forth. Tell me, okay. Uh, another friend, uh, he's got a screenshot confirming the rant was in fact about him. I'm not going to read that. Uh, now, here's some other interesting information about the fiance. Again, I'm going to deal with the fiance as we kind of go through this uh, playback here. But apparently some guy named Morgan Wallen 
uh, before she moved to Nashville was involved. Don't know uh, who this guy is. I'm not a country music uh, fan or listener. Uh, so he finds it super ironic that she's given relationship advice to men that are trash and need to grow up when she herself uh, has plenty of indiscretions in her past. Uh, in person, Tommy's very rude to most people. So I guess he, I mean, he knows her personally, obviously. I mean, she seems kind of rude and mouthy in the video to begin with. So I'm not particularly surprised. Uh, uh, rude and mouthy, even to people she doesn't know. She grew up an only child, has always been on the defense, combative. She's she's very combative in her, in her personality. And um, there's some red flags there, which I'll talk about as well. Uh, she pissed off a lot of people on the left, right, social media, blah, blah, blah. Okay. I don't need to go in anymore. So that's, so that's kind of the background guys. Do me a favor. If you're watching this live, hit the uh, like button. Just let the YouTube algorithms know that, um, this broadcast is worth sending out and notifications to other people. Let me pull in to the stream, the audio, and let's see what she's got to say here. Um, just let me know that you can hear this. Okay. If you, if you can't hear the audio, let me know in the comments. Oh, waiting for you all to just join on in here. Some of you, I probably will answer some questions uh, later on, but I have some things I need to go through first. <laughs> all right. So for those of you the other night, I believe it was Monday night, who watched my PSA for boyish men. Um, it is this is hilarious. Did you guys see this comment here? Interesting. Since gained a little bit of traction. Uh, I also posted it on Facebook. Oops, wrong button. Let's go back here. She was about 15 seconds in. Oh, come on. There we go. Oh, waiting for you all to... Audio's good. All right, good. Join on in here. Some of you, I probably will answer some questions uh, later on, but I have some things I need to go through first. <laughs> All right. So for those of you the other night, I believe it was Monday night, who watched my PSA for boyish men, um, it has since gained a little bit of traction. Uh, I also posted it on Facebook, and I think it's sitting at about 1.5 million views Got right now. Got a stretch now. to so get into obviously, this. Obviously, it picked up a little bit of talk, a little bit of chatter, uh, a few haters, which is okay. Not like I'm not used to that. I'm very used to it. But I did want to clear a few things up about that video and just expand on it a little bit because that's always important. You can't ever say everything you want to say in 15 minutes. And I've heard a lot of comments on it, a lot of praise, a lot of criticism. So I figured I'd just go through some of them if y'all are ready. All right. So first of all, the, some of the, the misperceptions and misconceptions about some of the things I said in that video that I wanna go through real quick. First and foremost, okay? <laughs> I don't think all men are trash. And I also wanna again read. So why did she say all men are trash today? This backpedaling is going to uh, increase significantly. It's almost as if it's worse than the original piece. She doesn't know when to shut her mouth. The distinction that I made between boys and men. There is a big difference between boys and men. And I'm not talking about an age difference. I'm talking about a mentality difference. If you are a man and you watch that and you thought that I was calling you trash, I will apologize for that because I don't think all men are trash. I don't think any men are trash at all. I think that some boys who think that they are men have a tendency, shall we say, in 2020 to not quite act the right way. And I'm not saying that girls act the right way, mind you, okay? This is an equal opportunity situation here, but I'm not a dude in case you haven't noticed. I don't identify as a dude, I'm not a dude. So for me to do a video about how crappy women are in the dating scene, I really don't think I could offer you that much knowledge on it because I've never dated a girl yet, okay? So <laughs> I can't help you there. I'm not saying that girls are perfect and men are awful or boys are awful. I'm not saying that, never would say that. I'm sure that there are many horrible girls out there that do many horrible things. I myself am not perfect. I acknowledge that, I'm happy to acknowledge it. So I wanted to clear that up. Men, I don't think you're trash. I happen to quite like men and uh, especially real men who act like men and who treat. So you can see that again, she's pointing and sputtering the same that she did in the first video. I only like real men 
if you don't comply with my rules and regulations and agree with me, then you're a boy. So if you don't agree with Tommy right now, fellas, you're a boy. That's basically what she's saying here. This is, you know, this is how they, how she's going to operate. And I'm going to get into that in a little bit, but I want to clear up some other uh, misperceptions about the video, things that maybe you guys were confused about so I can help you out. It was not in any way, shape or form about my ex fiance. We already know that now. So before we continue on here with her playback, I just want to shed a little insight onto who the uh, ex fiance is. So, I've paused that. Let me remove from stream and okay, we've got to go stop screen and then we're going to share this one application window. Boom. Share. Okay. So we don't need any audio for this. So, um, this is the fiance that, uh, she ended it with, uh, Brandon Fick. So, so you know who this guy is. Uh, he's an ex-professional uh, soccer player. He's uh, running for Congress right now. He's got coin. I don't know how rich he is, but he's definitely not poor um, by estimation from what I saw. He's probably worth a couple million dollars in and around what she's worth. She's she's not loaded by any stretch of the imagination. She's probably only worth a couple million dollars, okay? Um, obviously, money's right for both of them, so it's not a problem. But she ended the engagement with this dude over here. Uh, I'm guessing he's probably got the six sixes. He's definitely he's definitely taller than her. So he's I'm looking at a guy that's potentially six foot tall. He's fit, you know, probably has six pack abs, six month out of relationship, blah, blah, blah. But when you start to like drill down through what happened here with the two of them, and I think it's revealed in this article over here. Um said, so Lauren 27 at the time said she's not ready to settle down. And after discussed her feelings with Fick and they ended. So she dumped him because she was not ready to settle down. Now, the guy that DM me said she cheated on this dude with a country music star. Whether she did or she didn't, I don't know. But this is what he's saying from his firsthand experience. Um, she dumped him. She's She just turned 28, by the way. She's not 27, I think, um, on her wiki page. Her birthday is in August. So she is, in fact, 28. So she's so she's at the epiphany phase. Like, she's running down. Oh, look, she's got a wrist tattoo. That's like the first sign of basic right there. Um, romantic relationship. I think there was a $50,000 ring. Oh, here's uh, dating a Navy SEAL before this guy. Oh, by the way, let's see if we can find out how this guy reached out or is in one of these two articles, probably in this one, then here it is. So this guy's a beta. This is why they ended up um, wrapping up this relationship or why she dumped him and, and, and ended the engagement. Um, let me show you where it is because apparently he DM'd her or he tried to slide into her DMs. Uh, LinkedIn profile, she said yes, blah, blah, blah. So Fick wrote on Instagram March that he first sent her a direct message. So, so this guy was an orbiter on her Instagram, slid into her DMs, uh, urging her to stay strong after she was criticized by Glenn Beck. I don't know what she was criticized for, but this is classic white knighting behavior. Okay. Uh, I'm not doing this broadcast to like take down uh, who she is or any of those things. This is not designed as red meat. This is designed as a learning experience for you guys. So I want you to sit back, relax, and just take a couple of notes here so you can learn something about what uh, enlightenment having a red pill lens gives you as a guy. Uh, but, but anyway, so this guy slides into her DMs, urging her to stay strong after criticized by Glenn Beck as a white, as, as a good white knight that he is. He swoops in to save the honor of my lady. He also invited Laren at that time to dinner and she never responded. Now, had she now she had probably would have seen it. I would imagine this guy has a blue check mark. Uh, what's his name? Brandon Fick. Let's take a quick look here. Uh, da, 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 Brandon Fick. I bet he's a blue check mark guy on Instagram. Okay. Let's, uh, blue check. Let's see if he's there. Brandon, Brandon Fick. There he is. No, he's actually got quite a small following, so he's not a blue check mark dude. So it is entirely possible that uh, she might have missed it in her DMs because those things pop a lot easier for these. Okay, anyway, so no, wrong one. Scroll back down over here. I promise you there's a point to all this as we tie it all together. 
Anyway, so stay strong. Uh, criticize Blam back. Uh, Fix said the two eventually met in person nine months later. So nine months later, I guess there's some DMs back and forth. Um, made the most out of that chance opportunity. And that's it. The end of the article. What a terribly written article. Anyway, so they get together um, after he slides into DMs, uh, white knighting. They get engaged for a couple of years. And then obviously she doesn't have a genuine burning desire for him. So she calls off the engagement. And let's go back to our little uh, rant now, because this is all relevant to what's going on here. Uh, Chrome tab. And I said what I said. Oh, hang on. I got to add auto. Give me a second. Stop screen. Share screen. Chrome tab. And share audio. Share. Okay. You guys should be able to hear this. Let me know if the audio is not coming through in the chat. Okay. My ex-fiance is a saint. My ex-fiance is a great individual. A great. So why did you call off the engagement if he's such a great guy? I'll tell you why because she saw him as a beta. He probably over those couple of years went through a process of betatization through a thousand concessions. Not, not a big enough dude for her. He was not the best that she could do, right? He was not, <laughs> I mean, we can go back to the Instagram and, and look at his, but she's got something like a million and a half or 2 million follows. He's got 11,000. Uh, he's running for Congress. Believe it or not, this guy was not good enough for her. tall, Handsome, running for Congress, ex, uh, you know, ex-professional athlete, probably fit as hell. Didn't, you know, did not cut it for Missy over here. Great man. And the woman that ends up with him is going to be incredibly lucky because all the things that I bitched about in that video, he didn't do any of those things. He's a great guy. So Again, why didn't you out. marry him? It wasn't me being scorned about a broken off engagement. It wasn't me being scorned about a bad breakup. I haven't dated anybody in months. So it wasn't about. When she said, so. So here's a little code for you guys. When she says, I haven't dated anybody in months, what she's basically excluding from that one night stands, friends with benefits or anything in between those things, but nothing serious worth reporting to any of you guys because she's such a wholesome tradcon woman. That And it was about my ex fiance. So I want to clear that up. If he's watching or his friends are watching, not about him. Another thing that I thought was kind of weird because I read some media headlines about it was that my video the other night was homophobic. You're going to have to explain that to me, how that video was homophobic. I don't think I don't it was homophobic in the least. I can't even wrap my mind around how anyone say it was homophobic. That makes no sense to me. So if anybody got that impression, um, maybe rewatch it because it certainly wasn't nope, homophobic. I'm good. Don't need to see but it I also want to talk a little bit about a couple of the responses that I got. And once again, kind of just reinforcing my point here. So the kind of responses that I got from at least people that I know, males that I know were, were two. So I just want you to watch this next bit coming up because this is where she starts lying. She starts to tell you guys, men either contacted me and said, gee, I didn't know any of those things. Thanks for informing us. And then she goes on to praise these men as if to suggest that they're high quality guys that her and her friends would date. Well, you just saw the guy that she was engaged to and she called off the engagement because he wasn't good enough for her. She didn't have that genuine burning desire. Otherwise, they would have been married by now, right? First of all, most of the guys in my life, they either thought it was about them and it wasn't and they apologized and they didn't need to. Or I had friends of mine that I've never dated who are just dudes who messaged me and said, hey, this actually- Alphas do not apologize to women like this over nonsense that she's ranting about on her PSA. They just don't. So again, she's painting this with a broad, broad brush, trying to suggest that if you follow what she says, if you, if, you, if you become a man and you man up, fellas, then you might have the potential for a sniff hit at something like this. That's, that's basically what she's saying. Listen to me. I've said for, for a long time, guys, there's like all women have some feminism in her. This girl over here, it's strong within her because she's sitting there pointing and sputtering at men. All, all she is is just a prettier feminist is all she is at the end of the day. She really helps me out because it's a jungle out there. And sometimes men don't know how to act. They don't know what women want. They don't understand what they're doing wrong, which was the whole point of my video. It wasn't to 
give men a guideline of things they already knew. It was to help you out in case there's some things you didn't, okay? Maybe men don't know that we like plans to be made. Maybe men don't know that consistency is important. Maybe men don't know that it's nice to be valued for what you bring to the table. Maybe some men don't know that. She's talking about consistency, meaning if you start going out with her, she wants you to keep going out with her if she likes you. If she doesn't like you, she's happy for it to end. It doesn't matter. It's not significant. But she's looking for consistency in, in guys that she has strong interest in that aren't sticking around for her. That's what she's complaining about. And then she's also going on to talk about her value as if, you know, her her couple of, I don't know, like her mill or two that she's got or her uh, group of followers on her Instagram has some value to your life as a man. It doesn't. It, it, it's It's just not significant. It's just lip service. Those things. Maybe they don't know how important communication is. Men Whenever women say when you don't know as a guy how important communication is to a woman, that's something. Never, ever, ever listen to that. Okay. You have to watch what she does, not what she says. And at the same time, women want to be led. Okay. They don't want to lead you. They don't want to be your equal. They want to be led. It's, it's just it's just a fact. It's a reality of the dynamics between attraction and men and women. But she's going on there to try to twist the reality, a skewed reality, to ch ch you know, cr crumple it up in a big ball and whip it out there and hope some of you guys that are hot enough will slide into her DMs and want to take her out and potentially wife her up because she's of value. And women think differently. Totally understand that. So I got a lot of men that I know who are great guys who honestly messaged me and said, hey, this is helpful. It's nice to know how women think. It's nice to know how you and your friends think. I like you. I think you're a cool chick. So Bullshit. it was great pointers. And that, again, reinforces my point. That is the difference between a man and a boy. No high value men of any alpha cred would have messaged her and said any of those things. That's a load of crap. <laughs> she knows it. You guys know it. Let's call it what it is. The men in my life that I've dated, met, gone out with, or I'm just friends with, they were really, they either laughed, they thought it was funny, or they were like, hey, cool, thanks for the heads up, okay? That's a man. And then... Actually, no, they didn't, because I had messages from more than one of them. That was just one of them. There was another one as well. But they all pretty much said the same thing. You're full of yourself, you've got a bad attitude, and you think that men should be bending the knee to you. Not good. I got the other responses from boys. And I don't know a whole lot of boys, by the way, but there were some boys that like to creep through Twitter, um, some with blue check marks, some that are in bum F wherever and don't whatever, that just wanted to make a comment. Um, and their responses were, Tommy is bashing men. Tommy hates men. We're not your fan. So right here, this is like a classic telltale sign of feminist type women. They don't take ownership. They point and sputter. Right. And she's basically saying, I didn't do any of that. I'm I'm just a I'm just a little girl. How could I possibly hate men? I love men. <laughs> they just don't add up. And anymore because you hate men. That is a boy response. Because a true man would know that the things that I Rude said man. probably didn't apply to them. And if they if some of those things did apply to them, they were like, hey, let me make it better. So if men want to make a video and be like, hey, girls, this is what I think you're doing wrong. By all means, please do it. I will be a viewer. Could you imagine if I did a video that I said, hey, girls, this is what you're doing wrong? I listed like six things at one point on uh, Twitter. I think it was about a year or two ago. And the Internet exploded with like hate and vitriol. I said something like. Hey, ladies, if you want to keep a guy around, have some culinary skills, be feminine looking, you know, like have some curves, don't be overweight, you know, eat healthy sort of thing. Don't bring kids in tow from a prior relationship. Like don't be a single mom sort of thing. And, you know, there's like five or six things and you can't even say these today. Right. And she's inviting it. But but the truth is she's she's never going to want to hear it. Nobody like her is going to want to hear it because that's what feminism is. It's a supremacist movement against like it's almost like a hate movement at this point. She really doesn't like men, even though she's suggesting that she does. It's just not true. It's not factual. All right. Just throwing that out there. But yes. So to all the, those, especially on Twitter, because Twitter is the most vile place um, that That's true. had to had something to say about how oh, well, she's not a conservative. She critiqued men. She's a feminist. 
Yep. I'm not a feminist. Yeah, you are. And being a feminist is a completely different thing from what I did. If I'm going to point out and criticize some of the behaviors of modern men, that does not make me a feminist. In fact, I think it makes me pretty damn conservative because I'm looking at the way men are raised right now. I'm looking at the way society is raising men, the way pop culture is raising men. And I'm saying maybe there's a problem. All right. And the problem is you men. It's got nothing to do with women. It's got nothing to do with her and the beliefs that she's rattling on about. It's all your fault. Okay. Just take a good hard look in the mirror because the reason why we have problems, it's all your fault, not hers. Could you imagine being married to this chick? Could you imagine coming home from work, from your day, putting up with crap all day and then having her just coming at you with something? It's going to be like the blinds one day and then the crystal chandelier hanging in the wrong place. It's got to get moved or something like that. Or you're not bringing enough table to the table. You're going to hear her talking about bringing table to the table in a minute. It's hilarious. That's a very conservative thing to say. And I'm going to get to a little bit more of that in a little bit as well. But I also want to talk about the responses that I got from women. And most of them conservative women. So to all you boys out there who are telling me that I'm not a conservative because I made a critique of the way modern men act. Yeah, you should know that all the girls in my DM are mostly all conservative women. And they all were saying, preach, preach, preach. What you said is true. Oh, my goodness. Thank gosh someone said something because what you said is true. So those are conservative women out there. So for you so-called conservative men who are actually some of you boys. Um, I've got guys in the comments here saying, you know, would, you know, you should debate her. Would you ever debate somebody like her? You should have her on for a debate sort of thing. Honestly, there's nothing to debate. There's, you know, there really isn't. She doesn't, a woman like this is not going to want to hear your opinion or view if it conflicts with hers. You know, it's as simple as that. I'm, I'm, I'm here, gentlemen. Again, this is not a takedown. Okay. This is a, Let's learn some lessons here. Classroom is in session. Hello, we've entered bomber command and cold hard truth bomb shall drop. Let's carry on. Um, who are saying that you can't possibly be a conservative and say anything bad about the male species in general. I'm sorry, you're wrong. Male species? Really, Tommy? It's a gender. The sex, male sex. It's not a species, okay? There's other species out there outside of humans. I can say whatever the hell I want to. And if those of you who aren't familiar with me, I really don't care if me speaking the truth and me speaking my mind bothers and triggers people on the left, the right, the middle. I don't care. I'm going to say what I need to say. And that's what makes me genuine and real. And for those of you that have followed me for a long time, you know that about me. I'm going to spit it to you straight, whether I'm doing it on Instagram live or I'm sitting at a bar doing it. All right. I'm going to give it to you straight. And that's the way it is. It's not me being bitter. It's not me being mad. It's just me giving you my damn final thoughts because that is what I do. And I think I'm pretty good at it, by the way. So a lot of women came to me in my DMs and were like, thank you for saying something. So again, I just hope this can be a learning tool. I don't know everything about everything, but you know, at 27, almost 28 years old, I have been around men. I've been around a lot of millennial men. And what do you think that means when she says, I've been around pause men? Let me know in the comments what you think the notch count is. And I've seen some things that I think could be changed for the better. Communication that could be improved. Things that could be improved upon that would make us all just a little happier. All right. And men, it's going to help you out too because you're going to get a real kick-ass woman who is going to be really appreciative of all those things. That so, so she's talking about if you do all the things that she says, you're going to get a kick-ass woman that's appreciative of you. Does she look like she's appreciative of anything? I mean, she was engaged to pretty much Giga Chad, right? That wasn't good enough for her. Um, nothing, like nothing seems to make this woman happy the way that she talks about men and intergender dynamics, right? That you fix because they're probably really simple fixes. So I want to talk about that. Um, I also want to talk a little bit about my backstory. All right. Uh, again, my video the other night was not about my ex fiance, but prior to him, I dated a lot of just really horrible men. All right. If you Here guys read go. my book, you know, every guy I've ever dated has cheated on me. Every guy I've ever dated has. If, you, if you've read her book, you would know. So, so what's her book about complaining about men again, you know, about all the terrible men out there. Lied to me. Every guy I've ever dated has just quite frankly, not been great. 
with a few with a few exceptions so every guy that she's dated has lied to her and cheated on her and has not been great with a few exceptions okay so just just sit on that for a minute i just want you to marinate on that as we carry on that were great people but we just didn't work out but most of the guys have treated me like absolute crap and like most of the women watching this i put up with that for years okay i in high school through almost all through college dated the same guy who treated me horribly. He cheated on me multiple times. He said horrible things to me. He did horrible things to me. And I sat there and I put up with it. I was always incredibly strong in my politics. I was always incredibly strong in school, in my professional life, in my career, in my determination. But for some reason, I went through so many years of letting someone treat me like crap and I stayed, and I know that there are so many strong women out there that can relate to that because they're such badasses, but when it comes to men, for some reason, they just can't get themselves to be as strong as they are in other places. I, once I got out of that long relationship, I fixed the hell out of that. And so I'm gonna translate what she's saying now because we know there's mostly a division between alpha men and beta men. There's, of course, some blend in between. You know, we know that there's there's... There's a spectrum, of course, but if you want to distill it down into the two main categories, women view guys either as alphas or betas. She's complaining that the alphas did not commit to her, treated her like crap, were not loyal to her, blah, 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 blah. And then she's saying there were some great guys out there. What she's really saying is, I dated a bunch of alphas that I pined for, that I couldn't control, that wouldn't listen to me, that were just behaving like men do. And then there were some betas that were just nice guys. They were white knighting for me, maybe like this guy that, you know, got engaged to her that slid into her DMs and nine, nine months later they have dinner sort of thing and he's, you know, he's playing the white knight role. She doesn't understand that and you can't even explain these things to her because she's like, you know, the teacher appears when the student is ready and a person like this is never going to be ready to hear these cold hard truths, right? So she's just going to complain about it like a brat. You know, she's basically calling all of you guys boys instead of men. But the truth of the matter is she's not a woman. She's a brat. And then after that, I decided I wasn't going to put up with it anymore. And I had a few bumps in the road along the way, but pretty much so I haven't put up with a lot since then. And I hope that all you women out there will be the same way. And men, if you guys are with a horrible girl or a horrible woman and she doesn't treat you well, I hope you'll do the same. I hope you'll be strong enough to say peace because no one deserves to be treated like crap. All right. And there's something. Really, Tommy? Peace. That's what guys say, not women. Why are, you, why are you trying to behave like a dude? It's not attractive. Stop it, okay? Things that just aren't fixable in a relationship. If it's gone on and gone Peace. on and gone long, on and the precedent has been set for treating each other like crap, in my personal experience, it probably just isn't ever going to work. People don't change that much when they've been set in their ways and the precedent has been set. And here's another thing for ladies out there, if I would give you a little bit of advice, is you teach people how to treat you, which is actually part of the this point of the PSA that I did He's the other right night. You set your own price tag. You teach people how to treat you. You set the precedent. If you say this is what I expect, then those people that want to meet those expectations. So she has a price tag in her head on a scale of 1 to 10 right now. Is she a 10? Is she a 9? eight, seven, six. What's, what's her price on a scale of one to 10 on the sexual marketplace value? Let's get a consensus from you guys watching right now. You tell me in the chat what you think her value is because she has in her head an estimation of value. And I suspect it's nothing lower than a nine or a 10, to be honest with you, the way that she speaks there to people. Expectations, they'll still be there. All right. So I just want to give you that, that piece of advice. Um, I also want to talk about what I call the DBAP double standard. For those of you who follow Clay Travis and a lot of others, they've developed that term DBAP, don't be a, I think you know what the P word stands for. I'm not going to say it, but it's funny to me that I got ripped up and down by conservative accounts on Twitter because I basically said, don't be a, and all of a sudden I'm bashing men, but when a man says DBAP, they, every man goes, yeah, yeah, don't be a, Okay, so I'm confused. Um, I don't like double standards. I'm not a feminist, but you guys know I'm going to call it a double standard. Yeah, you are a feminist. Um, I'm not going to go back to that point. Let's carry on. When I see it. So for me to say DBAP to the men out there who are acting like, you know what? All right, that's not me bashing men. That's me doing the same thing that a lot of other men do to men saying, hey, grow up, act right, be a man. Okay? Just gonna throw that out there. Be a man. 
treat women with respect and also demand that respect in return. You got to make sure women treat you right as well. You don't want a sugar baby. You don't want a girl that's DMing five different guys. You don't want a girl that's got nothing going on who relies on you for everything. Hell no. Hell no. That's why I'm trying to help you. Find a girl that brings something to the table. Hell, find a girl that brings a table to the table. I think it's going to work out better for you. I hope that for you. I hope that for me. Damn it. I hope I can find a guy that appreciates the fact that I bring a table to a table. She was engaged again to a ex-professional athlete and a congressman who was tall and handsome. And she called it off. All right. And that's another thing. I'm not perfect for people that thought that my my commentary that I did the other night was me just being self-indulgent. Guys, I laugh at myself more than anybody else out there. I know I got problems. I am in many cases. I'm a damn dumpster fire when it comes to relationships and everything. Let's just hover on that. What did she just say there? I'm a damn dumpster fire. She's talking about her value and you guys need to bring a table to the table. But she tells you straight up <laughs> her life is a dumpster fire. See, this is where guys don't listen, right? This is how we end up inviting crazy into our lives when we ignore everything else and we don't give ourselves an opportunity to let somebody throw a hissy fit like this. This is why if you're going to get involved with a chick on a long-term basis and invite her into your life personally, you need to spend some time with her to see how she responds to stress. This is something Sean and I have talked about on Before the train wreck before. Um, she does not respond to stress very well. She makes a big public announcement as a hissy fit, gets all kinds of views. Then she gets upset when people uh, feed back on her opinions about the sexual marketplace and men and her past and what's been happening with her friends and blah, blah, blah. And here we are today. It's crazy. Yes, I am not perfect. I am also a mess. A big mess. <laughs> okay. But I do get frustrated just like anybody else. And for those people that tell me, well, you should just stick to politics and talking about politics. I hate to inform you of this, but I'm a whole damn human. I'm a whole damn human with many dimensions. I talk about a lot of things. I'm not sure it's many dimensions or many different personalities. I wonder though, right? Now I got a super chat here. It says, what's wrong with her advice about being decisive, planning dates and being consistent? Nothing. Absolutely nothing. The problem is, is, and she's right about guys not being decisive in the way to plan dates, but I suspect it's more because they're because they're using her more for a booty call, and she doesn't like that she's being used on that level, uh, and she's looking for that long term relationship. She's she's basically looking for it all. The way this chick talks about the sexual marketplace, her her past, men in general, and the experiences and and some of the behind the scenes stuff that I've got, this is the typical overly entitled. Um, has a stronger sense of self-worth than what her actual value is in the marketplace and sets this long list of expectations. Like we're not talking about a list of like five or six things, right? Like guys have a simple list, be attractive, be pleasant, be around, you know, have some culinary skills, you know, be great. Bet. It's, it's, pr it's pretty simple stuff. You can count on like one hand, but when you get into a woman's list, she's probably got this like checklist that's pages long that would cover so many different items it'd be freaking exhausting i mean could you just imagine that so no eddie there's nothing wrong with with being decisive or asking guys to be decisive but she's but she's conflating it with other ideas based on her poor experiences and and, and uh, choices in the past all right i don't just stick to politics because i'm a living breathing human that has opinions about a lot of things Okay. That's just me. That I guess that's the benefit of me. Um, my mouth and also the disadvantage. Well, here you go. This is, this is part of the problem with why she lost attraction for, uh, Studley McGee in, in Congress, I guess, um, being an independent in, in Congress only pays 60 K. Um, that would not be good enough for her if she's working for Fox news and, and probably making uh, six, maybe mid six figure salary. I don't know what she's getting paid, but it's, it's definitely gotta be more than that. If she's doing commentary for Fox news, right? Manage of me, my mouth, sorry, is the way it is. That's how I am. Sorry. If you don't like it, bye. But, um, Another thing I want to talk about too, is no woman wants perfection. I know a lot of you guys are saying, Oh, now she gets into the, hey guys, no woman wants perfection. All we just want is some basic stuff. I bet it's going to be like, be a nice guy, be loyal, don't lie to me. So it's like, you know, she'll, you know, she'll cry and cry about 
what's going on in her life over the shoulders of some one night or of a, sorry, of a white night or a beta. And then she'll go off and bang Mr. Exciting, right? You know, we've heard this many, many times before. Nobody's perfect. We try. That's all we're asking for. For me in a relationship, I just ask for a couple of things. I ask for you to be authentic, authentic. and I ask for you to be loyal. loyal. And that to me comes with a side of good communication, being direct. I Again, this is why you don't listen to women's advice on the sexual marketplace. Be loyal, be authentic with a side of good communication. That's all she wants. How many guys out there right now would give her those three things, right? I was watching this show the other day, uh, Love on the Spectrum. It's about autistic people. It's like any one of those guys, right? would give her that. I, I posted a, a, a couple of quick uh, clips to my Instagram. If you didn't see them, they're interesting. But by definition, with what she all that she's looking for, that would be good enough. This is, again, gentlemen, why you don't listen to women's advice on the sexual marketplace. I'm very direct. I don't beat around the bush. I tell people how I feel. I tell people what I'm thinking. And if they like it or not, that is the way it is. I personally like to know where I stand with people, which is why I am very direct. I think the worst feeling for a man, for a woman, is not knowing where you stand with somebody. I think that's the most frustrating thing. I don't have time for it. I don't have time for the games. I don't like to be... She knew where she stood with her fiance. Dude wanted to marry her, bought her a $50,000 ring, put it on his credit card. Dude's making 60 grand a year and buys her a $50,000 ring. Doesn't get much more beta than that. She, he, he basically ticked off her three basic requirements and that wasn't good enough and here she's telling you that that's all that guys need to provide be texting somebody and then they just stop texting me or they fade out for a few days you know if you're interested stay interested and if you're not interested anymore then fine but please don't circle back i talked about this the other night that's just really the big thing for me is just be direct in your communication if you're not feeling me then just please just go away it's just that simple go away but don't come back please don't come back because i don't like i say there night i don't care anymore <laughs> Yeah, you do. That's why you've talked about this twice in two hissy fit rants. But to all those people out there who are saying that because I did that video the other night that you no longer like me and I'm not a real conservative, I got to tell you guys something cleared up real quick. I stopped caring about losing followers for being honest a long time ago. I am far more concerned with losing myself trying to trying to appease people. I'm not an appeaser. That ain't what I do. All right. I speak the truth. I speak my mind. That is how I am. That is how I'm wired and that's how I'm always going to be. But I do apologize to the real men out there. If you thought I was lumping you all into a category of being trash, I don't think all men are trash. I was raised by a wonderful, fantastic. Okay. Now this is just the wrap up to it. You know, she wants all of these guys to be honest and loyal and authentic with her. Is she, is she being authentic when she's, she's preaching and lecturing to everybody here with her hair extensions? Like, like that's not her actual hair here. It, I don't know. I don't, I don't know. Like, you know, is that something that guys could argue? There's a whole bunch of stuff that you could take apart in this. Honestly, you could spend hours on it. Let me stop the screen here. We'll go to full screen. Uh, we'll start to wrap this up. There's an interesting point here from math, music, and life. He says, compare her dialogue to some of the professional women that you've dated, doctors, lawyers, or a female actuary I've dated. Can't imagine coming home from work and her talking about this on and on and on. I know a lot of guys get super frustrated with, um, the level of success that they have uh, dating on date on, on dating apps and so on and so forth. And they get really, really uh, um, frustrated is the best word with it. You know, we'll leave it at that. Um, and they expect better results. But I invite you guys that have been frustrated to watch this video over and over again. Watch it three, four times. Watch it six, seven, eight times and ask yourself, is this what I want to enter into in a long term relationship? Because if you're not careful, this is the very thing. This is the this is the future Karen of the world that could make your life miserable. You could be a very successful facial surgeon. I don't know, making half a million dollars a year, and Tommy shows up in your life, and you wife her up, and then all of a sudden you're listening to these lectures all day long. Honestly, dude, you would have been better off by yourself. You would have been better off frustrated. So, don't uh, don't beat yourself up too much. Um, you are going to get this. If you get into some of these, you know, more uh, boss girls, I like to call them bossy girls, but I mean, like you will get that. Uh, let me see if there's any other super chats here that I met, missed and we'll wrap it up. Uh, a Tallinn said, I had the opportunity to date a girl like this when I was in pilot training. I'm eternally thankful I knew better because of channels like this. Yes, this is why I, I put out content, guys. You know, this is, this is here to help you to 
um, declutter all the blue, you know, like all the fog of war that's around that you can't see through and, and, and really cut to the chase. Uh, Philip said, not knowing where we stand is literally the everyday feeling we have interacting with modern women. Uh, shake my uh, SMFH. You guys know what that is. She has no accountability. Again, this is par for the course, right? Um, women want to have authority, but they don't want to deal with the accountability component. And historically, those two things have gone hand, hand in hand. So this is why you're going to get a lot of pointing and sputtering stuff like this. If you guys come across anything like this in the future, shoot me an email. Um, with a link to it and I'll take a look at it and I'll deconstruct it for you guys. Again, I'm not going to take it, take the approach of a takedown. It's going to be a deconstruction sort of translation to help point to certain things that are sitting in blind spots that a lot of guys miss. Um, looks like we are all caught up in the super chats. A couple of quick announcements. I have, um, let me grab the new channel here. Um, because I want you guys to go subscribe to it. Because what I'm doing is I'm releasing shorter clips there, kind of like Joe Rogan clips. Um, if you're familiar with his channel, so copy. So go sub uh, my new channel here. I'll also uh, drop that in the pinned comments. It's, it just says Rich Cooper Clips, and you'll see uh, clips almost on a daily basis from all my longer form content. It's just more distilled and tighter for you. Also, tomorrow I got a really good uh, before the train wreck coming out. I had a, um, a long conversation with a guy the other day that basically put himself through the betatization by a thousand concessions uh, sequence of events. A uh, woman saw him at the get-go as her best option, very attractive. In fact, during the COVID lockdown, invited him into her uh, inner world with her family. And the more time they spent together, the less attracted she became to him through the process of the betatization through his thousand concession. So I'm going to be talking about that tomorrow on Before the Train Wreck. Uh, probably be about an hour broadcast. Going to go live at 8 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. Cover some really interesting details that often sit in a lot of guys' blind spots because they end up just sleepwalking through life and marching into the slaughterhouse and they come out the other end. And this guy was tr like, he was, he was traumatized, right? Like he wasn't able to sleep at night, all kinds of problems going on in his head, but this is kind of par for the course. If you don't approach women and relationships with uh, a reality check, if you're spending all your time listening to public service announcements by women like Tommy telling you guys how to be men to give her what she wants and you go and do it, which is typically what you do. I'm a nice guy. I'm authentic. I'm loyal to her, you know, with a side of good communication. You figure, you know, she'd stick around for life as she promises sort of in this video. But the reality is what women say versus what they respond to are most often two separately, totally different things. So that's what I want to talk about tomorrow with the um, before the train wreck. All right, guys. Thanks, everybody, for watching. Leave me a comment below. Smash the like button. Again, if you want to send me anything like this to kind of deconstruct, if you come across it uh, in your days, just either shoot me an email at entrepreneursincars at gmail.com, or you can try to uh, DM me, but often the DMs get lost. So the best place is to always uh, shoot me an email with a link to it, and I can take a look at it for there. See you guys later. This is going to be the proper piece. This is the way men do it, not this chick trying to be a dude.